All right then gang, so we're two thirds of the way there. We have our header now, we have the list as well. And when we click on one of those items, it deletes that item from the list. The last thing we need to do is create now a little form at the top up here. So when a user types something into that, then clicks on a button to submit it, it gets added to this list right here. So to do that, first of all, we're gonna create a brand new component. So we can split out all of this functionality into that component and that is going to be called add to do so add to do.js and at the top again we're going to import a few different things again because i'm so lazy i'm going to copy all of that jazz and paste it right here now inside this one we do need the use state hook because we're going to keep track of what a user is typing into a specific text input so let me import that as well use state like so we also don't need touchable opacity, but what we do need is a text input and a button. So let's replace that with text input and also add a button as well. Okay, so now down here, we need to create the component. So let's say export default function, and we're gonna call this add to do. And in here, eventually we're gonna take some props, but for now, let's leave that. And inside, the first thing I'd like to do is return some kind of template. So I'm gonna say return, and then in that, first of all, we'll do a view. And then inside the view, we need a text input. So let's create that text input. And this text input is self-closing, but we also need to add a few different props. So let's do that. First of all, I'm going to add a placeholder. And that is going to be equal to new to do dot dot dot. And then secondly, we're going to have an on change text handler. Remember, this fires a function whenever a user types something into the actual field itself. And I've just noticed a comma over there. We don't need that. So let me delete it. Okay, so now over here, what we're going to do is create a function called change handler. And I'll reference that change handler, like so. And we need to create that function up here. So const change handler is equal to a function. And that function is going to do something later on. It's going to interact with some kind of state so that we can keep track of what a user is typing into the input field. So what I'd like to do now is actually create a piece of state at the top, which is going to keep track of what a user types in. So let me do that by saying const and then text. And we also need set text like so and set it equal to use state like so. And to begin with, it's going to be an empty string. So this is going to keep track of what a user types in to the input field. Now, when a user does type in and we fire this function over here, all we're going to do is say set text and we're going to pass in the new value. We need to take that in as a parameter right here. Remember, when this fires, it automatically takes in the value. This is the same as doing this, firing an anonymous function which then fires the change handler inside it and passes in the value. Okay, so that's exactly the same as what we did right here. So if we just take off this and this, it still passes the value automatically of the text input field into that function and we can receive it right here. Okay, so when we set the text, we're going to pass in this value right here. Okay, sorted. Now also we need to add a style sheet because I want to give a style to this text input. So let me first of all say style is equal to styles dot input. And then down here, let's create that style sheet. So I'm going to say const styles is equal to style sheet dot create. And inside here, pass an object. And then we need a property called input. And the input is going to have a margin bottom of 10 pixels just to give it a bit of breathing space. And then it's also going to have a padding horizontal. And that is going to be around eight pixels. It's going to have a padding vertical. So up and down direction. And that is going to be six pixels. It's going to have a border bottom width so we're just applying a border bottom to this and that is going to be one and then also we need a border bottom color and that is going to be ddd which is a light gray 
Now I need to spell this correctly, border bottom. Okay, so we have this basic component now to add a to-do with this text input field. What I'm gonna do is now import this inside app.js. So let's go over here and say import add to-do and that is gonna be from forward slash components forward slash add to do okay so now we can nest it down here add to do like so and we should see that form up at the top okay we get an error and that's probably because inside add to do we don't have the view imported no we don't so let's import that and then let's save it again okay cool and now we can see it so now as we type into this we're going to be keeping track of the value in our state right here, okay, via this change handler. So the next thing I'd like to do is add a button to this component. So when we click it, we're going to take the value and we're going to create a new to-do and add it to this state right here. So let's do that. Let's add a button, first of all, below the text input. So button, and then this is going to have a on press prop, and that is going to be defined in a second. We also need a text prop and that is equal to what is shown on the button. So add to do like so. And then finally, we need a color prop. You know, I said we can't style buttons. Well, we can't add the style prop, but what we can do is add a color prop like this. Color is equal to something. And I'm going to say coral and that just colors it different. So at least it looks slightly better. So inside this on press, we need to add some kind of function. Now I'm going to do an anonymous function for now. And all it's going to do is console.log, whatever, oops, not console.group, console.log, whatever the current state is. So text, let me do that and save it. So then now if I try this out and I've made a whopping error because I've said this should be a text prop and instead it should actually be title. Okay, so save that, and then hopefully this will work. And then we can see at the top we have this. If I type in, say, testing, one, two, three, and then click on add to do, it should log that to the console. So let's open up these tools, and we can see testing, one, two, three. Awesome. So this works, but instead of doing this, what I'd like to do is take that to do and add it to this thing over here. Now remember, if we wanna interact with this state, we can't create a function over here to do that because the state is not here, it's over here. So we need to create a function inside this component to do it. So I'm gonna create now a function called submit handler, and that is gonna be equal to an arrow function. It's gonna take in the text which a user types in, right? So we'll pass that into it. And then inside here, we're going to use set to do's, which is this function, to update the state. Now, this is gonna take in a function as an argument because we're gonna rely on the old to-dos or the previous to-dos. So let me take those in, prev to-dos, and inside this function, we're gonna return a new array, so return, and what we wanna do is return the new array with all of this stuff in it, but also the new item as well. So I'm gonna return a new array like this, and then inside that, we're going to add dot 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 prev to do. So this is the spread operator. And what it does is take everything inside this, this array right here, the previous to do's, and it spreads them into this array. So we're getting all of the current ones, but also we want to add the current to do, the new one with this text. So to do that, all we need to say is, okay, before it, add another object and place your comma after it. And then that object is gonna have a text property because it has a text property and the text is gonna be whatever text is sent in. So text is equal to the text. And then also we want a key. Now the key is just a string. So to generate this, I'm just gonna use a bit of jiggery pokery. I'm gonna say the key is gonna be math.random to generate a random number, then turn it to a string by saying to string like so. Now I know this is not the ideal way to create a random ID or key. You could import another library to do this for you or you could create a more sophisticated function to do this for you. I'm just using this because it serves the purpose of this tutorial. The likelihood of this generating two identical numbers is pretty small so I'm good with this for now. Okay so now we're returning a new array 
with the new object with that text, right? That we're going to pass through and the previous to do. So all of the current stuff as well. So the new state is going to be this array. All right. So we need to actually call this submit handler from this component right here when we press on the item. So to do that, we're going to have to pass this function submit handler as a prop to this add to do component. So let's say submit handler is equal to submit handler like so. So we've passed it through as a prop. Now inside add to do, we can destructure it up here. So submit handler like so. And then down here, we instead of logging it to the console, can call submit handler and pass in that text. So we call that function. It takes in the text into that function. It sets the to-dos, which is a function that takes the old to-dos. It returns a new array, which is going to replace the state up here. That new array is going to contain a new object, and the text is going to be whatever text we pass into it, which is this value down here, the value we're tracking when they type something in the input field. And we're generating an ID for that object as well, or a key. And then also spreading the previous to-do, so all of this stuff, into that new array as well. So that's going to update the data and that change will then be reflected over here on the screen. So let me save all of this and cross my fingers and hope this works. So let's add a new to do. Go shopping. And I'm going to press add to do and woohoo, we can see that now. We can see go shopping is right here. Awesome. So there we go. That is our to do list pretty much done now. And by the way, if we click on that new one, it should disappear as well. Yep, it does. And these still work. And I can add new to do's and everything seems to work. Awesome. Now, there is one problem with this. Say I add load of to do's like this, and I'm just going to randomly add weird gobbledygook stuff. Let me delete all that and start again. You know, blah, blah, blah. Let's just say I'm adding all these different to do's, right? Now, if I take this keyboard down, I can't actually scroll all the way down to the first one. It scrolls a little bit, but the first one is go shopping. But we had all those other ones below it, these original ones. So it's actually kind of sitting off down here, the original ones. And I can't scroll all the way down to those. Now that's happening because the flat list component in app.js. So this thing right here is actually going from here off the page. So it's scrolling down the flat list, but it's still sitting down here at the bottom of it. And that's because it's being pushed down by all of this content at the top here. So we need a way to bring all that back up. And to do that, we'll have to talk a little bit about Flexbox. Now, we're going to come back to this problem later on and address it then after we learn about Flexbox in about two or three lessons time. But first, though, I just want to add a couple of last features to this app.